Come on, Rangers. 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 Torquay United are in town. The South West Coast Club and a surprising amount of supporters have made the four hour trek up to Surrey for what is, to invoke the kind of cliche we try hard to avoid, a six pointer of a match. For Dorking Wanderers and Torquay United are separated by a solitary point at the lower echelon of the National League. In the previous encounter at Plainmore, Dorking surrendered a 3 1 lead to take just one point from a game that should have delivered three. Torquay's team has not changed much since that night, while Dorking's new signings are giving Mark a boost, including this new chap, who told us he'd rather stay in the background, whoever he is. And so Mark and the coaches go into the tie with renewed confidence, especially as they believe they have a pretty good handle on how their opponents will be approaching this game. I think it's like 55% of the player back four, you know, um, 45 back three. We will match what they do, okay? So, really simple stuff. This is how the match was down at Torquay. I thought it was definitely one of our best performances of the season. And they were very lucky to get a point out of it. So they just played, <coughs> they played an out and out fucking 4-4-2. Four, four, and they just boomed it to fucking this Jarvis the whole time. Like literally. That was their pattern of play. They're looking to force throws, because they got a massive throw. Sounds basic, I know, but you know, telling your teammate sometimes to hook it away because he might have forgotten in the moment and put it out for a throw. They've got a, they've got a throw that's going to sit under the bar. I think the right wingers, probably their most effective player, although the left winger had a good game uh, Saturday. The left winger, I thought Bobby done a great job against him down there. Really good job, mate, especially first half. Um, he's just one of those boys, he just wants to be on the ball with no one around him, but he's, you just have to mark him fucking tight and, and do what you do. So... In terms of playing out, so, we, so we'll be, if that's the formation, we'll know when we get the team sheet, because there's one boy, there's one boy that, that plays when it's a three, so we'll know. About 60% of their goals are where other teams give them the ball. That's how they play. So that is them in a nutshell. The only thing is, Lapsley, I think his name is, the, the centre mid, he, he, one of these two, he does tend to make a lot of box runs a lot. So number four, he, he scores a few goals, considering he's a, he's a fucking... Pivot, he scores a lot of goals, well, a lot, a lot, he scores goals. So just be aware, he will join in this fella, okay? Just be mindful of your discipline as well. Just, just, just be mindful of them little early yellows and shit like that. Do you know what I mean, okay? Where you can help them. We must, must play football the whole time. There ain't no change for us in this game, chucking it forward. Now, I, I, if we're under pressure, I totally want you to lump it. That ain't a problem. But when we get chances to play, play rather than go long, if you've got a choice of putting it in behind for Seager running, you know, into an overload, because if they play about four, he's marked by two blokes. That, or just rolling it to Briggs' feet, roll it to Briggs' feet, fuck, and we'll get it back, we'll go out the other side, we'll do something there. Don't force the game, keep the ball. Where we're fucking good, always have been, the boys that know the club, is we just keep the ball relentlessly, right? Don't rush, just keep the fucking ball. All right, we'll have our moments, okay? That's the plan, boys, get yourselves ready. We're going out of five, two, what time, dead balls? There's many a, a manager, way, way better than I'll ever be, that have made a serious living out of being a, you know, a manager that puts the ball into areas and plays, you know, that insurance style football where the ball's not in their half, it's in the oppositions and, and um, yeah, that's, that's how Gary plays at Torquay. And you've got to remember, you've got to respect these teams. Some teams have to play that way because they maybe can't, have the, they've not got the resources to, you know, get all the amazing technical players. So, and you do see it in this league, you see a lot of teams, and I don't really want to be disrespectful, but there's some obvious ones that are in a really healthy position, and they're in a healthy position by just knowing exactly what to do to pass, get, get, get by in this league. Are, are you tempted to join them in any way, whether it's no. the rest of this season? No, no, not a fucking chance, man. I don't think I don't anywhere near as many people come and watch us. I, I really don't. I really think, you know, the beauty is people love it when we get it together. They love the way we play, that, you know, and, and that's almost part of our brand and IP, you know. Um, so, no, no, not interested in that. Loads of teams played long ball in the league below. Uh, but we just, um, you know, we, we obviously just need to kick on a little bit from where we are and, and, and you know, fathom. Well, not fathom even. We just need to... Just be able to deal with the maybe the the clientele in this league, 
as opposed to the one below. The, the bloke they're sending it to in the air is bigger than the next bloke. The long throws are longer than the long throws, you know? <laughs> Everything's just a little bit on heat. This season, I, I must be honest, I did think we would have a playoff push. Um, it's not worked out that way, obviously. Um, some poor recruitment over the summer. Obviously, we had that horrible playoff final defeat a couple of years ago. And um, it's just a shame that we're having to fight for relegation. But that's not, nothing new to us, to be honest. Um, we've had plenty of relegation battles in the past. Most of the time, we've managed to get ourselves out of trouble. We've, we've hit a lull. We've got a lot of injuries, a lot of uh, loan signings. It's just not gelling together, but it's coming together after the new year. We've had a few good results. And it's starting to pick up now. Probably mid-table, but obviously Gary Johnson's our manager. And I shouldn't really say this, but even if we did get relegated, Gary Johnson's the one that to bring us straight back up. I mean, after two seasons ago getting to the playoff final, I mean, hoping for a playoff push. You know, a lot of tough teams in this division, but didn't expect us to be where we are. But, you know, we've had a difficult period recruiting over the summer, everyone gelling, and it seems to be coming together now, so. From where we were from the last home game against you guys, we were, we've, the football's definitely improved. We're getting results, we're grinding results out. We'll stay up, we'll stay up. We'll be all right, we'll, we'll be fine. We've signed so many good players in like the last two weeks. So I've always had faith with, with Gary Johnson. Oh, I'm sure it'll be a very tight game, entertaining game, but um, very close game. It'll be nick and tuck all the way. I'm sure the Dorking fans are up, up for it and we're up for it too. We're in the sort of Knox County game a few weeks ago, we're playing five at the back. The last game against Barnet, we're playing four at the back and, you know, trying to, uh, it seems like utilising Dylan De Silva a bit more on the wing, which I think is his preferred position over more of a wing back. So we're obviously in the relegation zone at the moment, so hopefully tonight is going to be a six-pointer if we win. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the run of form we're on now, you know, we, the players all seem to be gelling and playing as a team, which is what you want to see, so. Uh, you know, I think we will be safe this year. Aaron Cole's basically fucking like two weeks away. Well, fucking Louis going. Last week he was fucking running on a machine with no weight, and this week he's fucking. Louis said he can't believe how much he's done. What a player that is. I think Niall's fucking. I think Niall's like he's like a Cortina, isn't he? Niall just does so much running, like last season. Then he's done, isn't he? Ed Toe, the wind pick a pass into yeah, height midfield there is Maka. Right. You know, and they're wide open. The the fucking have some of this lads tonight. Let's fucking have some of it. I ain't wearing them fucking shorts, I'll tell you that. Dino, go and check that ain't their shorts. Sorry? Go and check that's not their shorts. Must be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never know that. Shall I go and check? Do you want me to see the uh, ref? Yeah, I'm going to see him. Does the team sheet say that? I don't know. Mitch, do you know anything about kits? It says royal blue. Huh? Royal blue. It's fucking blue and blue. That's blue and blue. Wait for Alan, don't see Alan now. He's gone to his emails, yeah? And then come back, yeah? It's hard enough for fucking refs as it is, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we've got white, haven't we? Which ain't a problem to me. We've got white shorts in any event, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So that ain't a problem. Well, yeah, yeah, it'd be white. I don't know about a fuss. I'll, if their email says they should have different on, we'll, we'll make them change. But if not, we won't make a fuss. We'll just get ours changed. Blue, blue, yellow, yellow, they green, should. green. They should be wearing pink. So, yeah, that's what they confirmed to us they were wearing. You know, that's what they got to wear then? Yeah. Simple. I'll go tell the... That's it, just tell the ref. Back. Go and show the ref. Mitchell's getting the white ones. I, I quite like that at night. White, I'm fine with that. White at night, it's fucking decent. Yeah, yeah. Last time I wore white with these, I won. I can't think who we played. Make sure Briggsy don't do too much in here. Briggsy! Briggsy, don't overdo this. Don't. I'll do it, but I can't leave here. Nicky, get Nicky as a teammate, come on. Give me a teammate, go in that tea bar. Because yeah. Graham's got to stay. Graham, you've got to stay here, haven't you? Ah. Just sent Nicky to get me a tea. All right. This kit looks fucking great with white shorts, doesn't it? Looks better with white shorts, boys, than blue. Bob, if it is tight, early bells, because they just do one of them presses where they just run it, yeah? Just literally feed it into Seb's feet. See, Seb, 
you know, get him playing high at the pitch. Same with you, George. Yeah. If it's tight as fuck and you can't sort of see the central overload whilst the game's tight, rather than go long if you can help it, just literally feed it into Briggs's feet, mate, yeah. and we'll just play from high areas. Moro, yeah. make sure Maka and Josh are making the box. You've got a back four behind you, yeah. right? I love this on camera. Cheers, Nicky. <laughs> I'll get, but I'll send that wedding invite back, Nick, as soon as I can. Football, no matter fucking what the previous score was, no matter what the season fucking before was, right, 90 minutes always gives you lots of fucking shocks and surprises. They might get one off the arse in the first two minutes. Don't mean fuck all, we'll beat Torquay 5-1 down here, and we could score five goals, and we've done it last year in the last 15 minutes of the game. We're fucking relentless when we're on it. And we've got to be fucking on that, boys. This midfield tonight will be fucking on it. I know you will, 100%. Right, OK? Stay off the murder yellows. Just win the half battles. Yeah? OK, press the fucking game. Mac Macca will always, almost be magic man in there. I think everything about the warm-up was great. I'd be waffling if I said any fucking more. Really fucking simple. It's going to be a long 90 minutes. Long fucking 90 minutes, OK, yeah? All right, boys, simple as that, yeah? All right, let's fucking go. Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go! As was the case earlier in the season, Torquay are expected to play a long ball game and there's nothing about the opening stages that leads to any suspicion of that expectation being incorrect. <laughs> Dorking are sticking to their usual approach of playing from the back, which means this new defender chap has to cotton onto the patterns pretty quickly. Every team in this league really does have a long throw and Torquay's is almost as good as Wrexham's, which means they throw bodies forward, allowing for counter-attack opportunities. I'd also like to mention that nobody ever shouts you're in when someone's actually in. In fact, it might be the most inaccurate football shouts of all the football shouts. You're in! You're oh, in, Sega! You're on. fucking in, son! Really? Yeah. Make sure he knows that he's on the fucking pitch. When yeah, I told him twice. Dorking is starting this game with the confidence of Jimmy Kane, at least before the collapse of subprime mortgages as a result of systemic failures in risk management as financial institutions overleverage themselves with complex financial instruments based on the assumption of ever rising housing prices. Bobby Joe attacks the Torquay defence like Frank Galvin after a day's abstinence. Briggsy, come out! <laughs> Josh Van Mar. Dorking work the ball around like it's 2022 and eventually get it to the feet of Matt Briggs. Run in, Briggsy! <laughs> Moro, Moro, sit. For the first time since they took the lead against Oldham seven weeks earlier, Dorking have found the net in the league. The classic Wanderers move ends with Matt Briggs driving into the box before squaring the ball to James McShane, who slots it inside the far post. Yeah, hundred. I totally agree. When you get it, tell Ed to drop in the box for you. Deeper, yeah. Yeah. Dorking is showing no signs of relenting as they continue to pin Torquay back in their defensive third. Fucking hell! Yeah, fucking hell, fuck! Brilliant boy! It's got to be a booking, isn't it? Nope, but it is a chance for a Bobby Joe Taylor free kick special. Oh, mate! That's going in, mate. It's a good save, that. That is it, the crossbar. It's in the stand. It? It's clearly Dino's turn to be holding the eye as Bob's free kick skims off the bar. Mate, fucking strike that is. I thought you saved that. Torquay's long ball game would make a lot more sense to us if we saw any evidence of it working in their favour. But so far, the ball keeps coming straight back at them. Also, the Torquay fan that's closest to that microphone behind the goal is batshit crazy. Get him! 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 Get him!
Right foot, right foot. The home side haven't quite nailed the passing out every time, and on this occasion, Torquay see an opportunity to pounce. Josh, go and get it! Maka! Fall back. One ball, George! Man up, Bridge, man up there. Josh can't run past him, is all right. Boys! Well, I'm totally fucking love that, mate. Bobby Joe gives the free kick away and gets a remarkably harsh booking, while the new guy in the 27 shirt escapes censure for attempting to detach Dillon De Silva's head from his neck. Who's getting caution, mate? Who got booked? Bobby. 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 Dan can't say fuck all here, can he? Dan Lincoln parries Brett McGavin's pile driver, only to see the ball bounce to Tope Fadahunzi, who bases his volley high and wide. Stop start now, innit? Boys, come in! You've got to listen to me really quickly. Listen, don't sell out on the plane out. All that's happening is, listen, everything's a little bit too close. Centre arse drop further in the box, wingers go further away. Everything's just a little bit too compact, so they're splitting you. Full backs wider, centre arse deeper, wingers higher. And then Dan, fuck me! Jeff, do you want us deep and wide as a fullback? Yep, deep and wide. Like Woking. Dan, you want your full backs deep and wide, centre arse in the box, yeah? Yep. And we can, if we can't do one earlier or a 3v2, you'll just put it into wingers, chest high, so give him a break, back. put one Seb, yeah, and we'll just take. You better, rather than trying to set someone that ain't there, you better just taking a foul or taking a throw. Just hold the fucking ball, yeah? Just a little bit too compact playing out. Just get a little bit deep, a little bit higher. OK, promise you. The game is being broken up by small fouls, but there's nothing small foul about Kieran Evans's big foul. Fucking hell! Come on, Fucking hell! Hey, hey! No, he's soon, he's got it. Hey, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. More shocking than the dodgy tackle is the fourth official's ability to keep Mark under control. And that's saying something given how naughty Kieran Evans's tackle was. Yet another boomed kick doesn't give Torquay the outcome they desire, and the onus is on Dorking to make the most of the chances to rush straight back at the visitor's goal. Get closer to him! He's done fucking well, see. Josh has got to get closer, isn't he? Can't he? he walks out. Right, so has got a bit of support there. Two v two here, George. Make sure we're right. I'm Seb. Oh, he's got it. Talking of battering the talkie defence and for their own peace of mind need to get a second goal. Go on, Briggsy! Take him on, go, go on, on Briggsy! Bodies in the box! Go on, Maka! Ah! Oh, unlucky. Outside of an amazing long shot, the visitors know their best chance of scoring will be from a set piece. So, like Monet on a duck hunt, they're going to draw fouls wherever possible. Stop keeping fouls away because this is where they fucking. That's only where they're going to fucking score, mate. So, to mention that, we've got too many free kicks away. That's about five or six yeah. now. That's, yeah, the that's the only way they're going to fucking score yeah, at a minute. Totally agree. Write that down, Carl, for about little free kicks, shit free kicks. Shit free kicks. Uh, sl slow down play. I think we've got a slow down play. Yeah, yeah. Slow down play, shit free kicks. Uh, but we need bodies in the box. Seb's, yeah, because we're pushing good Seb's, balls in. Yes, but we, uh, for me, like what Seb's got to do is try and run him in the box yeah, or yeah, slow yeah, it yeah. down and let people arrive. If there's one thing we have noticed today, it's that going long has not worked out for the team that launched it. Oh, man. Mine's off. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> That's got to hurt, isn't it? That's fucking shit. Come on! Come on! Up to this point, Torquay have barely had a sniff of goal. At least until Aaron Jarvis picks the ball up 25 yards out and unleashes a dipping drive that lands in the back of the net. And it gives Dorkin the kind of gut punch that Mark was dreading, for they have not won in six league games and losing the lead is, well, it's a bit of a bugger, really. No dramas, boys. No dramas at all. No dramas at all. Relax, relax, relax. That's the first shot on target, okay? 
these things happen. Right, listen, they've made, a, they've made a significant change. They've made a significant change to our plan that's causing us a problem. It's the most basic one in the world. They're spilling it to the first player. We need to step into it. Mac has got to go. We've got to make... When the keeper was kicking, we were, we were fucking safe as ours is. All of a sudden, they're, they're spinning the first man, haven't they? You noticed it, yeah? Right? And we're dropping in. But it's hard for you to affect what's going on. This is about not selling out and how we want to play. There's loads and loads of mileage, like I told you, in those high transfers across midfield. That's where the mileage is. The centre half don't want to step in with Seager. Seager's having the easiest game of his life. Just stepping in front of him like, bosh, right? So there's so much mileage second half, but don't change anything that you're doing. There is no hurry to win this game, none at all. And I think obviously, because we're sort of, you know, we've had a good start there, boys. We played some good football, brilliant goal, typical Wanderers goal. We have some great chances. We have had some great chances, far better, far more than them. So I can see why you're putting your foot on the pedal because you want to fucking get a second goal. I wouldn't at all panic. If we make the keeper the only one who can kick, right? Because I was thinking, oh, should we do that? And I thought, oh, you know, but then they fucking eventually done it. Because all of a sudden, it, when they spin that first one, his mate can drop in and he can get it fucking toes, right? There's literally not a problem in the world. They could score second for me, we could score four or five. 100% going towards the fans all day long. We're doing everything right. Just remember, Josh, Seb gets the ball. We really want you in the box. Really want you in the box, Josh. We need a little bit of height, okay? Right, just say again. Don't worry, listen. I told you before the start, didn't I, right? That is football. It don't matter what the last result was or the fucking next one. Everything for me is great. Just keep your standards where they were. Standards were good. Talking was good. Football was good. Playing through the 3v2, midfield, bang. Everything totally fucking fine. All right, boys, Moro, lock the game up in possession, okay? All right, boys, everything's fine. Okay? Get ourselves ready. Oh, fcfootballkit.com. We're going to miss you when you're gone. Will we still discuss football kits? Probably not. We probably have another sponsor that won't want us to, unless they're a football kit company. Maybe they like this. We do like the yellow and blue of Torquay. We're suckers for yellow and blue. I'm not sure why. I wonder where that came from. Anyway, if you want to get yourself a football kit for the new season, why not try fcfootballkit.com? Aside from that's one long shot, Dorking have been comfortably on top of Torquay. So as long as they don't make any errors, they should be able to get in front again. Dorking suffer a dreadful restart with Matt Briggs gifting the ball in a central pocket for Tom Lapsley to run away with. The midfield dynamo storms down the middle of the pitch and after a brief exchange with Fadon Hunzi, clips the ball past Dan Lincoln to give Torquay the lead. Fucking hell, let's go, come on. Come on, 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 the goal has, unsurprisingly, sucks the atmosphere out of the home stands and the Wanderers are shell-shocked. It'll take something dramatic to get them back on top. Shoulder, Bob. Who's that? Don't be fooled by Kieran Evans's righteous indignation at being pulled up for a foul. Just like the first half, the midfielder has caught his opponent. And just as in the first half, the young lad is facing a yellow card. And two yellows make a red. He's off. Good. You're going on, get ready. Mark's response to the shifting dynamic is swift. Jimmy Mewitt is recalled from his warm-up with a view to replacing Matt Briggs. Jimmy, come on, son. Get us back in. There's loads of time now. It's literally all in front of the fan. Cut inside, do what you do. Score in front of these fans. They've gone 4-4-1 four, four, though. So they can press with their wings, but I don't think they will. They do go for it. We're four, we'll have the two overload, we'll have the overload with two centre half. As Beedy and Co figure out the tactical approach, Wanderers begin the second half siege on Torquay's goal. He's offside, he's offside. The next move is to get Harry Ottaway in the middle to meet Jimmy Mewitt's crosses. Head for Harry, okay? Harry, let's go, mate, let's go. Harry, Harry, you do six, Tony does nine. Let Tony do nine. Make sure they know. 
It may well be that every team is good at this and we just haven't been paying attention, but it certainly seems as though Dorking, when in their customary 3-5-2 formation, are experts at dealing with an opposing team that's down to 10 men. And what follows here is their own masterclass in spreading the play, making the pitch big and finding space in the box with pinpoint crosses. Go shape, Josh! Go shape! <laughs> Go on, Jim! Forward! Forward! Bobby, can we talk it over? Make a run, Jim. Bobby, come here! Bobby, come here! Plenty of players deserve credit for the goal, not least George Franken for pulling the midfield strings. But it's the two substitutes who get the glory, with Jimmy Mewitt showing his wing wizard skills and Harry the Hot Dog Ottaway doing precisely what he was sent on to do, equalise. Moro don't have to go anywhere, he could I'm just play. about to say, he's the one, he let the it. other two Jimmy, do the work. Moro! 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 Sit! Hold! You sit, you Hold. sit in front of time. Let Bobby George. and George go. You and Bob! You and Bob! The Marks want Luke Moore to sit in front of somebody called Tony, whoever that is, which should allow the rest of the midfield to bomb on, like the Fokker Wolf FW200 Condor. Dose. Who oh, crossed that George? He said, come on, George, he said. One more! Ah. We have the foul refs. Good work, mate, Seb. Good, Seb. Fucking brilliant, you. Good, Maka. Go on, you move, on, you move. On, you move. On, you move. Go on, Seb. Tony, more on, sit. Bob, it's your side. Go on, Bob. That's his move, though. That's the one he does. I don't mind that. Forward! Tight, man. Outside of him, Bob. Outside of him. Fucking outside of him. Bobby, get here. Bobby, get here. Take him here. Straight line. Straight line, Moro. Moro, stay other side, here now. Other side. Other side of the pitch. Other side. Josh, Josh. Turn out. Turn out. Yeah, turn. Come in. Too tight. Too tight. Come out! Seb! Come out! Now Mark has such a handle on how to play against 10 men that he's controlling the players like a game of Eminem Hughes International Soccer. And while some people may find that too prescriptive, he can't complain about it if it works. Bobby, Bobby, Bob, Moro, Moro! The Yacht Dog strikes again, nodding in another Jimmy Mewitt cross into the bottom right hand corner and giving Dorking the lead and giving himself a legendary cult status in the process. The goal is tempered by a hamstring injury to George Frankham and Dorking have to figure out how to see out the last half an hour. Set, 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 set. Go on, 
Take him in the box, sir. Take him in the box. Take him in the box. Now he's way back. Up, up. Go, sir. Score. Deliver. Oh, please, Scott. Ray, pull it in. You know what I'm going to say. You know. You know. Shirt pull is a foul. Shirt pull is a foul. The game is now wide open with Dorking keen to finish Torquay off and Torquay themselves looking to counter and grab an unlikely equaliser. 7 Turn that run at him. Turn that run at the fucker. Run at him. Man on, man on. Relax. Step higher. Go on. Forward now, Josh. Keep it moving. He's been pressed. No, no, He's no. He's been pressed. Well done, Tino. Well done, Tino. Keep him moving. Come up, come up with it. No. Get up, man. Get up. Go in. Oh, I like that. Right, right, right. Bobby, Jay, Jay. Good Bob. Come on, we failed. Come on, United. Stand him up! Stand him up! Come on! Get out! Cross in! Cross in! Good lad! Come on, come on! Low cross! Low cross is Bobby! Tighter! Tighter! Out goal! Even with time ticking away, Dorking aren't taking the ball into the corner. They're still looking for that fourth goal. Touch, take a touch. Oh, he's got him. Got him. Nice, Abby. Join him. Join him. One more and get us up. Bobby, sit. We're into injury time and Torquay go back to what they know best, hitting the ball long and firing a shot from long range. Can't we tour them on a fucking day, surely? When the Op Dog plays in Seb and makes a dash for the box, it sets up the chance for possibly the most popular hat trick of all time. Shay, come on, Maka! Moro! One coming in! Foot in. Foot in. Stay with him, one here! Sam! Bobby, one coming in! Sam! Oh, relax, we'll have that all day. Get us up, get us up, Billy! Tony! Get us up! Step! The other side! Harry! Get up! Harry! Ten. Nine. No fouls! Stand up! Runners! Yes, get there! Mac and get there! Stand up! Stand up! That's it, Miff, that's it! Yes! Fucking get in now! Cheers, mate. Top man. Thanks, Eric. Cheers, guys. Thanks, mate. Top man. Cheers, boys. Cheers, cheers, top man. Go. Hope you're good, mate. Well done, boys. Fuck me, Dino. What a game. The double sub, Jimmy Muir and Ottaway. Fucking yeah, hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Bobby, Bobby fucking boy, well done, mate. Come on. Stand, stand as shit, no game for that long. Three games and that long, stand as shit. That's it, that's the thing. Well done, boys, listen. When you haven't, when you've been fucking under the cosh, when you've been under the cosh, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's fucking, Sometimes the only, stopping, the only thing stopping you winning sometimes is, is how you think about it. You know I mean, you're one nil up, you're fucking in control of the game. I thought we was playing a bit anxiously. I thought we was playing a little bit fucking anxious at one nil up because me included, you're all thinking, mate, we get a second goal, we'll fucking take it to the cleaners, right? Then he pops it in from fucking 30 yards. That's their first shot on target. I mean, literally first shot. He, when he scored, he just walked off thinking, fuck me, right? And really, to concede a goal 45th minute, 
I swear to God, I, I might be wrong. I think that's the third game running, right? I might be wrong. Three and four in the 45th, 46th minute. To can see the goal like that when you're on a bad run. Because when you're on a bad run, that's the real test of how things are. That's the real test. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, we're hanging there, boys. We're hanging there. You know, so many things we've done today were better. 11 v 11 as well. No, real positive boys, sometimes when you haven't been winning, the only thing you fucking got is to fucking win. That's all that matters. It's some really good. Bobby, I always dig you out for being shit. You were really good today, right? Really good, son. Really good, mate. It's great to see you listening to Tone and Tone fucking, it he got MOM and Moore is not fine behind. The, the boys have come off the bench. You know what I'm saying? And I said to you before, and it's difficult for me because I've got boys that have played at fucking Wembley like Baz and Tone and that and boys that have come through three, four divisions. It's not easy for me to talk to that many different people. I said to you boys like, you know, this is a good division, mate. They're going three up, three down next season. It's a good division. Like the gap between this and the one below, I said to these subs beforehand, is massive. You don't want to be out of this division in a month for Sundays. So you've got to fucking give everything we fucking got week in, fucking week out. Right, I was so fucking pleased with the two that come off the bench. To it was, it's a combination both times, because I can't see fuck all in his lights yet. Right, which is good. So listen, loads of things went well. We was intelligent when we, you know, when we had the 10, it was simple. And I thought we defended their long stuff, mate. You know, we've had to take a bit of bombardment there and we were just clever. The way we've done it was clever. Daniel had a great game as well. So I'm full of great stuff today, really. I've not really got any little fucking any little constructive stuff really at all. Well done, keep working hard lads. Well done. That's good Bob that was mate, well done mate. Buzzing mate, but like, we have got to start taking the fact seriously, this jacket wins fucking matches. <laughs> like honestly, it's a fucking joke mate. It's an absolute joke. I feel like it's laughing at me saying, there you are you silly fucker, you take me off at your peril. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, listen, it's cliche, but first and foremost, it's the points that we're buzzing about. I think the whole squad is, and it was a, I think it was a solid performance, regardless of the uh, sending off, which helped. But regardless of that, I think it was a solid performance. So to get on the score sheet is obviously a bonus. So yeah, delighted. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know, com coming off the bench, obviously, I want to start each games, but I just think you know, I've got a point to prove here. I want to, you know, we as a team, we want to be in this league. So. You know, I want to do all I can to stay in this league and to put performances when I'm out there. And I've just said to myself now, do you know what? <clears throat> I'll get the ball, just get get at them. And I just think, if that's my game, you know, rather than playing safe, just do what I know I can do. It never gets boring seeing the crowd so jubilant, hearing the crowd sing. It never gets boring watching players like Jimmy and Harry who've only ever played two, three leagues below, you know, assisting and scoring winning goals at this level. It just doesn't get boring, all those things for me. But being brutally honest, I never really thought about it. People tell you things, but, but football is a game of opinions. You know, someone will say like, oh, he's no good, you know? And then other people will go, I oh, know you can play at that level. So yeah, I never really thought about it. I mean, when, when Mark put a seven day in for me last season, I was, I was thrilled to be honest with you. Yeah, it was, it was a compliment, you know? Um, so now being at the club, Every player will tell you the fans are great. Uh, they sing. They had a song for me after I think a week or two. You know, uh, that that that's warming. That that makes you feel great. And uh, all the lads, it's a great changing room. Um, great staff. Training's brilliant. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be here. Do you get excited when a team goes down to ten like that? I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know, because I was warming up. I was warming up because I was coming on anyway. And then, I, and then I, and then I, like thought, Oh, did they get a red card? So I wasn't actually. I, I just went on and was just, I'm just going to do my game. So I actually didn't realise. The way Mark's got us set up and the coaching staff coach us, we can exploit it, um, and it is enjoyable. Yeah, you feel like you've got a bit more time. You can pick up a pass and things like that. Um, but sometimes if football goes the other way, and then the team can be countering you, and, and then you're not sure who's marking who because there's ten men. Um, but certainly here. It is, uh, it's a joy to play. It's amazing how you forget what it feels like to win. It never gets boring. I fucking love it. And um, now we'll be planning for Wrexham. And uh, that's, a, that's a big game. And in my head, I'm just thinking, fuck me. Like, is this going to be one of those? Remember when we went to Wrexham? We've done shit like this before. We've done it before. We've done it similar to Wrexham before. So, um, yeah, that's where we are, mate. But not losing sight of the fact we're in a real you know, tight league, it's so tight.
Right, we need to tell you that you can get longer versions and earlier versions of these episodes on Patreon. So check out patreon.com slash bunch of amateurs. Um, also, if you could leave a comment, that would really help us, as would hitting like. That's a little bit easier. Um, and subscribe if you're not subscribed, and then you will always get alerts when we release new videos.